Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this uh, lecture with a thought process that greatest accomplishment is not in never falling, but in rising again after you fall. And if you look at in the last few lectures, we had discussed about both the laminar and turbulent premix flame. Today we will be starting a new topic that is a diffusion flame. And uh, if you look at uh, like uh, some of the examples I have given because uh, the candle flame which is I have shown here and which is uh, quite common. And then uh, beside this uh, the droplet uh, combustion or the under normal gravity I have shown and this uh, picture was basically taken in my lab and jet diffusion flame it can be both laminar and turbulent uh, kind of thing and this is again taken from in my own lab. So, uh, if you look at uh, the diffusion flame is uh, very important because of fact that all natural flames are diffusion in nature right that in other words the all the flames whatever uh, uh, nature has produced are basically the diffusion flame <coughs> otherwise if it could have uh, nature could have produced the premixed flame it could have been catastrophic because the fuel and oxidizer are mixed and then combustion will take place and any carelessness will lead to the explosion right. So, therefore, nature has not really uh, uh, thought about the pre-mixing the fuel and oxidizer. So, in the diffusion flame basically the fuel and oxidizer uh, remain unmixed up to the flame surface that is the beauty of the diffusion flame. But however, it is having problem you can see that uh, the flame here uh, in the candle flame you can see that it is basically the yellow in color right. And it is unlike uh, the premix flame where the flames are blue in color, right? And similarly, for the droplet combustion and jet diffusion flame, you can see the yellow in color. A question might be arising: Why it is uh, this color is there? And uh, another question might be coming to your mind: How does the fuel oxidizer get mixed, right? What is the mechanism, right? Uh, as you know very well that the mixing is governed by the two things one is your molecular mixing like, right other is your turbulent mixing right. But in case of laminar flame generally the diffusion is uh, being controlled or being governed by the molecular diffusivity right. And uh, the factors dictating the reaction rate is basically the rate at which the fuel and oxidizer reaches the sur flame surface. That means, if you look at the reaction uh, is very fast as compared to the diffusion process or the mixing process right diffusion process. As a result this uh, kind of combustion is known as uh, diffusion control. That means, diffusion flames are basically diffusion control whereas, the premix flame is kinetically controlled that means, it is controlled by the reaction rate. In other words the diffusion flame uh, basically the reaction rate will be very fast as compared to the mixing time right. So, uh, therefore, uh, it is a diffusion control <coughs> or diffusion limited you can say and examples of the diffusion flames you know the forest fire right forest fire uh, of course is uh, very very catastrophic and the problematic and of course uh, we are having very less number of forests or the forest area is sinking so therefore we are not facing that much a problem but however we are facing the problem of environment degradation so uh, the other one of course candle flame and then liquid fuel combustion which is very important uh, because of fact that for your transportation system and any other things we use the liquid fuel for the combustion unlike the gaseous fuel right. 
because gaseous fuel is difficult to transport. And also the another important thing is that like uh, the gaseous fuel is limited in terms of releasing the energy per unit volume. And whereas the liquid fuel one can go for a higher uh, combustion density or the com heat release due to combustion per unit volume. And the solid fuel combustion which is uh, very old as old as our civilization and again uh, that also is governed by the diffusion uh, flame or the diffusion control. Let us uh, look at a very simple uh, case of the candle flame I have shown. If you look at the process involved this candle flame is quite complex. First of all this is the wax which is solid in nature it will be converted into liquid whenever the heat will be uh, you know received from the flame surface due to radiation and due to uh, of course uh, mainly radiation and also little bit convection maybe right. And uh, we use this wick, wick helps in uh, transporting this liquid and you see this will be the liquid you can say liquid kind of things you might have observed and this uh, liquid will be getting uh, into this wick due to what? due to basically capillary action because it is a porous and then it will be getting into it will be moving against the gravity right without any force and then it will be vaporized and there will be some pyrolysis which will be taking place right and uh, because of heat is coming and then uh, it will be uh, some kind of a, a flame will be occurring and the reaction zone will be occurring and uh, this is C2 and CH zone which is there. So, if you look at uh, the mechanism of the candle flame to be more little this thing uh, specific that melted wax flows upward by the capillary reaction uh, uh, with the help of the wick or in the wick itself. And uh, then of course, the gas the this liquid gets uh, vaporized and convert into gas and these gases basically also pyrolyze and uh, once this combustion takes place you know like uh, only it will take place if the oxidizer is coming because the flame is established then what will happen there will be buoyancy effect. The buoyancy effect means it will be some of the gases which will be moving you know upwards because of buoyancy effect. So, as a result it will be taking this air entrainment right. This is the air which will be entrained because of buoyancy effect of the flame and air flows upward by the natural convection because this here the natural convection plays an important role right. Unlike in the combustion system in uh, practical application where the force convection plays an important role and fuel oxidizer uh, diffuse like let us say this is the fuel vapor and this is your oxidizer right and which will be moving uh, toward the flame surface this is your lumen flame surface luminous flame right flame surface this is your flame surface right. So, this will be uh, getting diffused uh, the fuel diffuses outward and then uh, oxidizer air will be diffusing inward toward the and as a result on the flame surface it will be uh, getting consumed and then you will get. And as I told that it is yellow in color not only the candle flame, but also the uh, other flames other generally jet diffusion flames will be uh, yellow in color. What might be the reason any idea is basically if you look at uh, as I told the pyrolysis will be occurring and uh, this will be starvation of the oxidizers and then um, there will be formation of soot and when the soot will be passing through the high temperature zone it will be radiating the heat radiating the not only the heat, but also the light in which is yellow in color. So, uh, as I told that because of uh, a large uh, amount of soot particles are produced in this uh, uh, candle flame or the weak flames, you might be knowing that uh, this uh, soot particles which will be there will be order of nanometer right. And uh, you might be aware that even the person who is uneducated they collect this soot particles for what? for kajal right to use that and people find that, that if you use that it will be very healthy for the eyes and other things right. 
it's a not that today people are talking about nanomaterial nanomaterials were being used even in uh, the den of the uh, beginning of the civilization right which is as old as our civilization so uh, therefore <coughs> this is people use it and uh, for various purposes and <coughs> so let us look at the jet diffusion flame jet flames and here the fuel and oxidizer is uh, basically mixed right this is the fuel plus oxidizer right oxidizer are mixed together and you will get a blue flame when you uh, oxidizer will be basically reducing you will be getting into that and then this is the diffusion flame mode and in between this is a partial lipti mix you can say right kind of thing so the color you know if you look at is a uh, blue color and this is the purple color kind of things of course some blue color is there and uh, then of course this is having yellow color some portion and it is a fully yellow this is jet diffusion flame and which will be uh, discussing about that <coughs> jet diffusion flame and uh, question arises how to establish a diffusion flame or a jet diffusion flame rather because we will be talking about now gaseous jet diffusion flame how we can do which is a very simple one we have already seen the bunsen burner right and uh, bunsen burner if we can close the vent right there is a vent here right which will be closing if it will close what will happen only the fuel this is the fuel line right which will passing it will be not, no air will be entering into this zone right these are the vents vents close vents right that means no air will be entering into this so only the fuel will be there and you will be getting a jet flame which is a very simple one to get and keep in mind that although this is a diffusion flame this portion is basically premixed flame you will see i mean like uh, you can observe that there is a little bit premixing will be there because of ambient air right you know this is the air ambient air which will be moving into that fuel will be mixed so that will be premixed flame rest of the thing is even and beside this you can also have a two concentric tube one is uh, let us say this is your fuel and there is a another tube which I can into air right and I can have a flame this is basically diffusion flame jet flame and this is known as coaxial coaxial burner in the case of single uh, tube or the jet burner generally what happen air is not being controlled you don't have a control over the air because the jet uh, fuel jet which will be uh, issued from this uh, tube will be dictating how much air entrainment will be taking because the air will be entering entering into this zone right this is air entrainment and that will be decided by the jet velocity whereas here it is not only the jet velocity of the fuel but also the air can dictate the flame shape and size right there this is known as coaxial burner or two concentric of course there are several varieties one can think of and keep in mind that this gaseous jet flame is being very much used in furnace and other places and although it is a quite sooty in nature right and it is very much essential particularly whenever you are heating the metal in a furnace and other thing why it is so any idea i need to produce more more soot if you look at uh, gas turbine applications or the uh, ic engines or other things where the soot is a deadly thing that means soot should be avoided but in the case of a furnace and uh, where the metal heating and other things are to be carried out there the soot is essential why because I think you are not getting because <coughs> the suit will help to uh, enhance the heat transfer to the metal because what you need the heat has to transfer to the metal 
quickly in case of a furnace or a processing uh, furnace, right? Are you not getting? The suit will be there so that it will radiate that, and radiation is a you know is a very high. If the temperature power to the four, it will go, and whatever temperature it will be, metal will see, and then it will be melted very easily, or the whatever annealing process, whatever the process is involved, it can be carried out easily. That is the reason why the jet diffusion flame, particularly sooty jet diffusion flames, are preferred. The physical description of a jet, let us look at it. And if you look at here, this is the fuel is a tube having 2 r or a diameter d. And when this uh, having certain velocity, let us say v uh, c h 4, this velocity right kind of things which is moving right. What will happen? Uh, of course, depend on the whether you are using a tube. If it is using a tube, it should be long enough such that the fully developed flow is attained. Otherwise, you can use a nozzle where uniform velocity profile will be attained. Whatever it may be, uh, then what will happen when it will give, then you will see that uh, if I say this is the center line is the jet direction that is and the r is this thing. And of course, I am not consider the effect on the azimuthal uh, direction, right. It will be same. Now, what will happen when the flow is taking place, then uh, it will be trying to entrain some air here, right? Isn't it? And uh, why it will be entraining? Because it is having momentum, right? This is having the uh, these are ambient air, right? These are ambient quiescent air. Right. So, it is a almost steel air. So, when it is moving at certain velocities, it will be having certain momentum and this momentum will be uh, utilized to uh, entrain some amount of air to this flow. It is like similar to your lead right in a uh, country or in your institute who will be driving the rest of the people with his own ideas, not through the power. Okay. Right. So, this having momentum to drive. So, that uh, and keep in mind that when it is doing you will find that interestingly you will find that uh, this velocity will be uh, not changing although there is entrainment in this region that is a potential core. That means, if I uh, look at the center line till that point the velocity will be remaining same. Let us say if it is at the inlet it is 10 meter per second just for the example then that 10 meter per second will be remaining along with this direction till these kind of things in the, the blue color whatever I have shown in potential. That means, potential zone or the core zone is not affected by the entrainment, okay. that is not affected by the entrainment. But however, once it potentially the velocity profile will be changing. right? I mean of course, here if you look at if I draw a velocity profile here, so it will be remain same and then after that it will be reducing right this is the velocity profile what i am drawing right it will be reducing i mean it will go i'll just show you in maybe velocity profile that is better so let's say this is the velocity profile uniform profile when r is particular of course the t is infinity and you can consider and this is the considering the aa cross section i am talking about then what will happen to the methane? Methane will be 1, I am like in mass fraction will be 1, because only methane in this region, am I right? So, whereas the oxidizer will be in this region, right. Of course, uh, this I have, it could have been the same location, I have given some gaps as to make it different, otherwise it will be same, right. Now, this region between the flame, this is the flame, this is known as mixing region mixing region. What is that? These are the mixing region, right, mixing region which will be taking place. And uh, if I will now uh, look at this uh, velocity profile, temperature profile, mass fraction profile B B, I will get like this. That means, this one if you look at this is the maximum velocity whatever it will be having, right, and it will be decreasing 
and temperature of course it is here temperature here is a smaller one and then peak at this point this point will be peak along with r keep in mind that this is r direction right and similarly what will happen the mass fraction of methane will be 1 at the center line at r is equal to 0 and it will be uh, becomes 0 at flame surface and this is your flame surface and similarly oxidizer will be 0 and oxidizer will be some finite value far away from the flame surface right and this kind of flame where the both the oxidizer mass fraction and the fuel mass fraction is 0 we call it as a thin flame approximation this is basically thin flame will occur only when y c h 4 will be 0 y oxidizer will be 0 at flame surface this will be occurring at flame surface but is it really possible actually in reality it is not right so therefore there will be some kind of uh, oxidize uh, uh, you know fuel which will be coming over here there will be some crossover here and this will be having a certain finite and this is your flame thickness right flame thickness i have exaggerated it it will be order of mm maybe half a mm 1 mm kind of is not with that big whatever i have shown here right are you getting but however we will be uh, looking at this thin flame approximation now uh, let us look at the uh, all these profiles at this uh, location cc you will get that uh, vz has been changed vz is being reduced from here to there as it going of course there will be two effect will be there one is the buoyancy rate because it is hot however uh, because of mixing it will be reduced peak temperature will be occurring at the center r is equal to 0 this is 0 right and after that it reduce that is the peak temperature whatever you will be getting at the center whereas uh, here the temperature is occurring at this point and this point all this point will be peak temperature because at the flame surface temperature will be peak similarly you will get that uh, this is uh, oxidizer is here and uh, there is no fuel fuel is being burnt out and oxidizer of course will be something getting into that and that of course the carbon dioxide will be maximum here and then it will be uh, minimum as it goes toward that because flame is located here so therefore carbon dioxide of the product will be uh, the maximum here and keep in mind that we uh, if i want to say that uh, the what is the flame height which i have told this is basically flame height and this hf how we will have to define that is the one question might be coming into my mind and this hf plays a very important role uh, because of fact that uh, it is one of the properties that govern the characteristics of a jet diffusion plane it is uh, similar to that uh, laminar uh, burning velocity in case of premix flame we have seen that uh, laminar burning velocity uh, is coming in all other uh, places like your blow off uh, and then your uh, quenching distance your uh, flame thickness uh, minimum ignition everywhere you know flame laminar burning velocity is coming into picture so similarly the flame length uh, or flame height or the flame length whatever we call like is very important for the jet diffusion flame and uh, we will be uh, looking at uh, this aspect in uh, little detail and so with this i will stop over in the next lecture we will be uh, basically discussing about uh, how to derive a phenomenological analysis how to derive a relationship for flame length using phenomenological analysis okay thank you very much